Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 344 at scavengerlife.com. We just, half an hour ago, sold our couch on Craigslist for $200. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. We bought it on Craigslist. Yep. And so, you know, we love this kind of math as scavengers. So we bought the couch for $500. Yeah. It was a $2,000 couch. And, and that was, was in 2011? Right. And we used it for a seven, seven years. years. Yep. And we just sold it for 200 So we basically uh, rented a nice couch <laughs> yeah. for $300. Now, I was going to put it up for hire, but then I was like, you know what? Well, we used it for so long. Plus, it was one of those things like, how long did we want to keep it? So Right. How um, long do you want to hold on to it? Yeah. I was kind of like... Let's Why did we cool. sell it? We were just... No, I mean, wanting a new. No, I mean the uh, reason's very clear to me. We, okay. I mean, I don't know if we don't agree on this, but the goal for this winter time is to clean our house. Yes. Declutter our house. Yes. Uh, we are decluttering our house, and that means, you know, we've had a house where our eBay business and our personal world were. Yeah. Intimately tied together. Yeah. So if you walked into our house, there were piles of stuff everywhere. Right. Every corner had piles of stuff. There are boxes in the middle of the floor. <laughs> I mean, currently there's artwork just a, a line just on the in carpet. Our room. Yeah. Yeah. And we've all learned, us and our cats have learned just to. You should walk around it. It's navigate around it. So, yeah. You know, for me. Uh, you know, what I want to do, especially now that we've invested in a storage place, is to yeah. get all of our eBay stuff over there. Right. So our house will be our house, and then the storage in our eBay office will be eBay. Yeah. You know. Um, so part of that was this couch took up, it's 11 feet long. Um, so it was taking up most of our living room, which is fine because that's what we sit on. But uh, it was nice to... Pull it out, vacuum the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't answer specifically about yeah. the couch. I mean, the, the couch, the problem was is that we it was impossible to clean yeah. behind it yeah. and under it. Right. So, like, when we pulled this couch apart, it was just, like, dust bunnies and... It and was just kinda, cat hair and... It was kind of gross. I mean, know? we, like, seriously vacuum like yeah. i i got up early this morning right. like we got to clean this before this lady yeah. the the funny thing was we cleaned it and wiped it down and vacuumed it and took it all apart and we were like this thing looks great now yeah. <laughs> but you know it was nice to make some room right so part of the uh the cluttering is not just getting our ebay stuff out but just all of our stuff like you know we can't have stuff just like lying on the floor you know? yeah and that's also like a big couch you know so right uh th that's why i you know like right now i'm just in a chair it's you're simple. in a beautiful leather recliner it's, that we also got off craigslist it's great you know i currently do not have a chair it's on a <laughs> i'm on a right stool now. that's like <laughs> but you have the opportunity <laughs> yeah to find the chair yeah that that i want do you want no, I do. I like that setup. So it's yeah. just, you know, you're kind of moving things around. And, you know, and that's, I think, how anyone who's hearing this that has a business on eBay probably can understand that. I mean, I think we all do this. You just I use the space available. It's probably right. an, an extra uh, a bedroom or down in the uh, basement. And then as it, your business yeah. grows, you know, why would you stop? buying stuff to put on eBay just because of space. You right. Know? Or at least that. Yeah, no, that's that definitely how you thing. think of it. <laughs> right. You, you know. know. I mean, and then, you know, I don't know if if a lot of people make that a next step. The a next step is in investing in, yeah, like a building. Right. I've heard some people, they, they buy a bigger house. I've heard... I've heard of that, yes. Who's that girl? Like, Green Frog Shoes, or what's her name? Uh... Uh, Miriam. Yeah. She said she actually bought another house. Oh, yeah. To, like, to make in her into neighborhood her, yeah. that's just for her eBay, and she hires people, and they go over there and work. Yeah, and, you like know. that's her, uh, her that house is an office, And that's basically. awesome. You know? It's incredible. Yeah. It, so. makes, it makes sense, yeah. you know? So this week, I, I just had, we had that auction craving. You know? Yes. 
uh, you know, I've mentioned it the past couple of podcasts. And the problem is, like, auctions that are right in our area are not good. They're not great. They're no. super junky. Yeah. You know? So we have to drive at least an hour to get to a good yeah. auction. Because, you know, we got to go to the auction near bigger, like, urban areas, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we went to one on Friday. Yeah. It was that, great. That was closer than, you yeah. know, most that we go to, which was nice. It wasn't a super long drive. It was drive. still kind of country, but it was closer to, like, you know, a place that has, like, a, a university. and there's, Yeah. You know, it was kind of nice. Oh, no, I was excited because I did want to go to an auction as well. I just, and that, that was, drives. That was interesting for me to hear that because normally I feel like you're not as into auctions. I'd rather go to an auction that's closer to us than one that's far, farther away. Right. Um, but, you know, it. there's always that feeling of like, was it worth it? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, we could talk about that a yeah. little bit. But. but, you know, if you've never been to an auction, I feel they can be addictive. If you're that kind of person. You just have to make sure you process the items. I mean, it's so easy to buy stuff, you know? Like, I, and I was actually better this time at not being intimidated because I was just like, you know, it's just, yep. a, it's an auction we've actually been to before. So, right. and it just, I feel like there are dealers, but they're like less aggressive dealers, huh. you know? I just feel like... I don't know. To me, it's just about, a, you know, a knowing the thing that you want to buy and yeah. then just almost just like blocking everybody out. Like put a yeah. number in uh, in your head. Like I'll pay forty dollars. It's for that thing. And then just focus on the the guy, and just raise your hand until that uh, yeah. number gets hit. There are know? a couple of things where I did do that. Where I was like, No, I'm getting this. I want yeah. it. You know? So I've been doing the uh, what Steve uh, it Schultz had talked about being very aggressive mm -hmm. when I bid. Uh, yeah. Where instead of kind of like hanging back and just kind of keeping an eye on like what people are trying to put the price at, I'll just jump in there and I'll put the be the first the first person. one because you're like yeah and 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 then I just bid quickly right you know, bump 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 and that normally scares people away because it's going too fast yeah so it's good no it was good I mean I had fun it's it is a long day though you know it's like. You just really have to make sure, and this place was great because it has a snack bar, and you're like, I need a big right. caffeinated beverage. Yeah, I mean, going. I think anyone that's been to an auction knows that they're, they can often be day-long yeah. events. Like, this one here starts at 10, and it actually goes to like 8 or yeah. 9 o'clock at night. And it's so funny because we were like, there. there's this one, in quotes, gallery that they do, which is like all furniture. And on the website, they're like, we don't start this till six. And I'm like, that's crazy. But it's because they haven't finished the other right. rooms I until mean, it's six. it's probably two football fields yeah, worth like, of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're like, oh, that's, that's yeah. why. And it's, you know, it's, it's a multiple houses of stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's many. I think the other thing is, and we were trying to kind of talking this on the, uh, it's forum about it is if you have to ask, should I buy this? You always need to buy it. You know? Well, you mean, like, if you're questioning it and it's... I think that's very common where yeah. if you stand there and there's so much stuff, and you're thing, like, huh. things are going quickly, and if you're like, huh, is that a worth it? I mean, if there's any inkling in, in me that thinks it's cool, yeah, I buy it. Right. Because the thing is, the worst that happens is I just pay to, to educate it's yeah. myself about that right. item. You right, right. And we talked about this. I don't think we've ever actually bought something and lost uh, money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we've we never we, at the worst. I mean, there's never been a time where we lost money. I mean, at worst, and I can't even think of that many things where you're like, okay, well, we just broke even. We made back what we, you know, right. we and we made back all our fees. And I mean, there have been times where we bought things like a big box of stuff and then just not been excited about it. Yeah. And then we've kind of not enjoyed putting it up on eBay. Yeah. You know? But we always, it's make. Yeah, cash there's from not. It. I mean, yeah. so, so like I was saying, there's that feeling after an auction, like you just spent. We right. spent five hundred dollars. We filled up our truck like you yep. couldn't you couldn't put anything else in that truck. And you're kinda like, 
was that worth it? You know, you're just like, you know. Well, that's a feeling going home because we spent, yeah. what, five something, five, yeah. Five and, fifty or something. And, and then, you know, but then we get the boxes and then and you start taking it out. And yeah, and you're, you're like, like, this oh, is cool stuff. This one thing will make yeah. $100. You know? Right, right. And then this, you know, and then this other stuff that I was, I hadn't even uh, focused on. Like right. Amazing, you know? It's like in the box and you didn't even know it. So the highest price things. So these are the two things that I bid on, you know, I bid on one of them and just kept my hand up where I was like, oh, people keep jumping in, but I'm just not letting this go, was uh, quite a large box of ephemera and letters and old, like, you know, cards and postcards. And it was from our town. Um, so that was kind of funny. It was like, oh, look, that's like someone who grew up and lived here and got So why is that here. exciting to you? I just like ephemera. I like yeah. old letters. Yep. I like old postcards. I like old greeting cards. Photos. Yeah, old photos. There was like also, it was so random. There was like a box of like gold-filled spectacles in there. I'm like, well, I sell that stuff all day long too. And that was in that box. And I paid for that box. I paid $65, which you know, is high you so know, compared I, to a $5 box lot. I but. saw it. You kind of, it's going because it was a fairly big box yeah, of it's stuff. Quite large. I mean, how do you think you're going to sell that stuff? I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll probably like just, I don't know. I'll, I'll just see what's what, like there was actually like, um, several envelopes of like canceled checks from the sixties for like a moose lodge or something like that. And I'm like, Somebody around here is totally going to want that. So, you know, I want to so, be able to... And why do people buy stuff like that? I mean, do you know? I, mean, I have no just, idea. Yeah. I mean, I know why people buy postcards. Because, right. like, you and I buy postcards of our area to show, like... It's, like, historical yeah, photos like of... Yeah, old town... I mean, old buildings that aren't there anymore. Yeah, stuff like that. Or, but, like, yeah. I don't know. The thing about, I don't know, canceled checks... They're written to people around here who are related to those people. Right. You know what I mean? That's like true. There, there's like you know it's written out to this person who was part of like the Moose Lodge like, or didn't whatever. You, it's called. Uh, didn't someone say on the form they sold like a like a piece of paper from like an eighteen T store? It was like oh, it was a receipt. A, you know, receipt. Well, the great thing about that receipt was. Um, you know, it had like all these pictures. I looked it up because I was like, I gotta see this. I love that. You know, back in the day when you bought a phone, it was like a big deal. It wasn't just like, it's at Walmart. It's like... A flip phone or no, like a... No, it wasn't a cell phone. It oh. was a rotary dial I mean, phone. So the date on the receipt was 1986. Uh -huh. So yeah, so why did someone buy a, a receipt for a phone? I didn't understand that. Right, so... Because it sold for how much? Like $120 or something? No, no, no. It sold for like $13. Oh, okay. Back then when you bought a phone, you know... It wasn't just like, you know, buying a phone at Walmart. It, it was like a big deal, especially if you're buying it from, you know, it was just a, it's a rotary phone. Landline. But like, yeah. but like on the receipt, it like showed all the different phones and all the different colors and like configurations. And mm -hmm. it was like beige rotary phone. Like right. it probably costs like a bunch of money because right. you were, I don't know if you were buying it from the, from the phone company or renting it from them well, that might have been why i mean some of it was happening before i i mean I don't when know. that was small i know for a while there like phone companies like you couldn't buy a phone from a private company you had to buy it from, from the, phone, the phone company and i don't think you actually bought it i, I yeah, think you I did think you rent rented it, it yeah Sorry. Because it was like s yeah. such a crazy technology. I yeah, guess. The, I mean, or it was honestly, it was too expensive for someone to buy. They're like, this is too expensive for the regular person. Okay. So, what was the lot that you bought? So, the lot I bought was it was in the junkier. I mean, so there was junky and there was, there was even junkier. <laughs> super junky room. You know, a huge room. Everything's piled on the floor. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely, it's, there is. A logic to it and the way they do it would be is that they would stand in front of like a bunch of piles of stuff yeah and then they would have you bid on choice yes. which means that whoever gets the highest bid gets to pick what they want so if right. the bids like 20 bucks then you get to bid, pick the the, the uh, boxes in each one of twenty dollars, and right. then from there they they do it again, and it usually is lower. And then it's like you know twelve dollars, and then the guy goes and picks his twelve dollar boxes, and then it right. gets to like where it's like two dollars a box, and then it's just like two dollars. 
for, for whatever, whatever is there. So, but the the problem with that is if you're like, oh, but I will only want to pay two dollars for the thing I want. It's like, well, well yeah, you got to so, be careful. Someone's going to grab it right. for ten bucks. So it's know? like a gamble. Like, yeah, do it's a gamble. I, you know, is twenty five dollars too high? Do I wait? Like, maybe the person that bids twenty five dollars doesn't get the box I, I want. want yeah, know? they want uh, some other weird thing. But like I said, I was being aggressive and i'd always be like i want it you know 25 dollars like that's cheap for us you know for a box of stuff like i know there's one thing i can sell for 25 dollars and yeah it depends on what you saw in the box so my favorite thing was i bought a box of insane clown posse hats <laughs> icp Look, Juggalo. Don't stop. Whoop, whoop. This is you're hurting me. My <laughs> and, ears are and, bleeding. You know, look, this is a country auction. Most people are older. They you know, know what like this I'm is. 44, so I was like one of the youngest people there. Yeah. There were only two other guys there who knew what, what it, it was. was. Yeah. One guy is the kid who uh, worked there, and he was the one kind of holding stuff yeah. up, and he was like, "Whoa, look at this!" Yeah. And all the old like country guys are like. Like, why are you bidding like, on who this Who cares box? about that? And then there's one other guy who was I was bidding against, and he was probably a little younger than I was. Yeah. He knew it, he what knew it was. He knew what it was. So there were, I counted them, there were 40 wow. hats, brand new. They're not brand new. Almost brand new. Because I had to wash <laughs> most of them. No, 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 no. We, we watched like 25% of them. The other okay. ones looked, Okay, well, that's Anyway, good. they were in great shape. Okay, that's, no, they're in good shape. Uh, I bought them for eighty five dollars. Yeah, so people thought that was insane. Right, right. insane I mean, clown posse. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, well, and, I mean, I mean, people were like, "What kind of hats are those?" So the the deal is for anybody who doesn't know about <laughs> insane clown posse, they have a rabid fan base. Right. I'm talking a rabid. Right. I fan mean, base. they're like. If you don't know anything about this, there are the ones where, like, the fans, like, paint their faces like clowns. clowns but yeah. they're, like, rappers yeah. from Detroit. Kind of, like, scary clowns. Yeah. yeah. So, it's kind of, like, like punk So, you know, I, I was thinking conservatively, <laughs> even if I sell each one for $30, I mean, that's over $1,000. Right. So, I was, like, $85. No, no problem. problem. And yeah. that's where I was aggressive, where I... I, I I was the first to start you the just, bid. Like, your arm and is I up. just kept my hand You're up like, until no. the guy just like, yeah, because you, you know, know what you can do with it. And, so. and you know, but that does stink though. Where I'm like, if that one guy hadn't have been there, I would have got the whole box for five dollars. That's happened right? a bunch of times at auctions where you're like, one person wanted. There this. was a lady at this auction who I think was doing that because she, she saw I was being very aggressive. Oh yeah. It's, and she was a Mennonite, like one of those ladies oh, she's, yeah. that wears like the handmade clothes and the and little the bonnet. bonnet and the tennis, the white tennis shoes. They're, they're not Amish. No, they're because uh, Amish people Mennonite. wouldn't be there. They're Mennonite because it's we're by a big, uh, you know. There's a huge Mennonite, and there was a lot area. where I'm like, why does she want this? <laughs> and I, I really have a sense, and I feel like I caught her looking at me and kind of smiling that she was just bidding me up. She's and you know what I said to her. Fair play. Fair play, lady. <laughs> you were like, you don't want this box. You just want me to pay more. Yeah. I was like, aren't you supposed which... to be about like peace and all this stuff? You lady, but you know what? <laughs> she got me. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it was fun. And the great thing was, it was like a dream, right? What? It was like we were living in a dream. And why? We come home. We like cruise oh, down. Yes. I put the truck in a neutral, and we just kind of roll down this hill, and we roll right into <laughs> neutral. <laughs> the hell? Right into our storage building. I back right, right up. Open, None of that stuff is in our house right now. Open the door, and we just unloaded it onto this big, you know, just this huge, plenty of space. Yeah. We just grabbed the one or two boxes that we wanted to bring to our home to like get excited about checking out. Yeah. And it was great. Instead of back in the old days, we would unload a truckload of stuff into our house. And we have a very small house. And yeah. it would take up the major part of our like, like walking our area. Living room walking And then area. for the next three weeks, we would just be kind of jumping over all this stuff as we tried yeah. to put it up on eBay. You and know? now we just... Go out, grab a box, put it in yep. whoever's pile is going to do it. It's exciting. And then put it back. Yep. Soon. Yep. 
Yeah, I know. It's great. Okay, let's talk about a couple things on eBay because this is what kind of we're all about. Um, yeah. The post office has raised their rates. Do they do it every year? Officially. Is it every other year? I don't know. I mean, I, I think they that they have the opportunity to do it every uh, yeah. uh, a year, and they seem to do that. You know, I think it's every year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is an example of why calculated shipping is great, because if you say, this item is 10 ounces, it's like, you know, you're not like, it's 350. Well, when they raise the price, you want it to automatically calculate the new price. That's why we love calculated shipping. Right. You're like, this weighs this much, right. so it doesn't no matter, matter how the you know USPS is right. charging for and, it. And, and and so people that try and get who try and get cool and they try and just do flat rate, they're like, it'll just fit into a flat rate that can. No, flat rate is also like. Okay, okay, so what you're saying is if someone's like, a flat rate costs X amount, let's just say $2, which no flat rates cost $2. Flat rate costs $2, so just charge everyone, it's $2 for this item, forever. Well, once the, the post office changes their prices, you got to go in and change those. Right. So what you want to do is use the calculated shipping. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what works And someone was coming on uh, the... Uh, it's forum. He seemed confused. You know, he was new about how to uh, it ship and how to tell people how how expensive it would be. So if you have to put in how it's it's much it weighs, right. but it doesn't really matter how big it is as long as it doesn't get too big. As right? long as it's not bigger than twelve inches. So if it gets bigger than that, you do have to kind of right. estimate a size because if it's oversized, right. twelve by twelve by twelve or what? That's the minimum. Okay. Like. Right. So as long as it goes into a box no bigger than 12, 12 by 12, 12 by 12. Yeah. If it's bigger than that, then you do kind of have yeah. to estimate or else you're going to underpay for shipping. Right. So. Yeah. And that's, we've heard that, that, and that happened to us it's before, where we forget about yeah, the oversize. Weight. Yeah. Because as soon as it gets to, to be quote unquote oversized, yeah. it gets to be really expensive. It changes the yeah. price. Um, yeah. So you got to be, you got to be careful about that. Uh and a lot of people are like, how do you know what size box it goes in? It's like, for me, I'm just estimating. I'm like, well, it's, you know, 20 inches long. So add a few inches to that for padding and box. And then how wide, it, you know, like, what is a good estimate for something like yeah. this? You know? And so we actually are trying out a new helper tomorrow. Yeah, she's coming tomorrow. Yep, we found another, because, you know, our one helper got a full-time job, and she works, you know, four hours a week or something. Yeah. It's, it's great, and we love her. But and, we need more help. Right, and so we, you know, had been asking around and found someone, and she came over, and we kind of talked to her to see if she'd be into it. And she yeah. said she'd try it. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Are you Fine. Uh, so how do you, so she's going to come over. Yeah. How are you going to deal with her? Like, how are you, you know, train her? Okay, so I'll do what I did with the other person where I just show her step by step. Number one, okay, look, we're going to start with those hats that you bought, which is I'm gonna, I'm going I'm to be like, this is a juggalo hat. She probably knows. Woo -woo. She's like, she's like 24 or 25. Right. She knows what it is. Yeah. But so, you know, I'll, I'll be like, okay, so this is how we make the drafts. Let's start with 10 hats. Let's make 10 drafts. You know, let's call it whatever. Um, let's put it in the right category. Here's a phone. This is the phone. So you come over here, you open the drafts in the phone. Basically, the phone is like a Wi-Fi camera. You know, that's basically all you're using it for. Right. You take all the photos, boom, 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 boom. It's saved on eBay. You come back over to the laptop, because this is how I do it. You open up your drafts, type your titles. It's so much easier to type your titles on a computer, in my opinion. Uh, make sure all the shipping is right and everything's right. And, uh, you know, that's just... Yep. Do and we don't have time. them priced because we've yeah. learned that either they don't know how to price... Right. Or I want to make sure I can do their research. Yeah. The if way, needed. Right. Some people have heard, you know, they'll have helpers and they'll be just like, this whole box is $10. Right. They'll put everything in $10. For us, it doesn't work. Because we for know, us it doesn't work, like no. the Juggalo hats, I was checking out. I mean, some of them sell for $300. I don't know if I have a $300 hat in there but I might so I yeah. want us to be able to uh, research and put the right keywords and yeah. stuff like that 
So, you know, that's what I'll start with. And I'll just be like, this is the process, you know, and I'm going to stay in the office because our, our veteran helper, I mean, she can just do stuff on her own. Like I'll answer questions or I'll right. you know go say hi to her when she starts, but she's like good to go for her, you know, forever, obviously, because she's been working for us for over a year. But this time I'll make sure I'm, you know, I have plenty of other stuff to list on, you know, on drafts now. So I'll just sit in my office while she's there and, you know, and be there to answer questions and just, yeah, exactly. So just, yeah. And, and I did that in the beginning when our other helper started, like I would just make sure I have plenty of work to do over there and just be there so she can ask and not just ask me questions, but so I'm looking at her listings and being like just watch out for this right. make sure you get this you know like i'm yep. seeing it as she as she goes and so. i'm gonna have to check her pockets she doesn't steal a juggalo hat from me <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she like walks out yeah. with like, i'm like nope yeah <laughs> you gotta be careful twisted oh, that stuff is crazy okay uh let's talk about our numbers um so did it feel like a slower fast week to it you? felt like a slow week did it feel slower than a week ago Yes. Well, the answer is it wasn't. It wasn't. I know. It was I know. I get the numbers too. We had a, it felt very slow. There was like one day where we, I think we sold two items or yeah. something. Yeah. But when I look at the numbers, I did them. It did average. We out. made we sold it's 49 items. Yeah. And we made a, a bit over it's seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah. So that's actually more than we made a week ago. Okay, that um, makes me feel better. I mean, I like to make two thousand dollars. A week like that really gives us yeah, pays all our bills gives us extra cash to, to yeah. like do other things with but you know seventeen hundred dollars is more than two hundred dollars a day so yeah uh, that's good again that that makes me feel all right um our second store the autopilot store which yeah. people have been emailing us about they're like Tell me about your autopilot store. Yeah, like just, they think it's a magic store, but it's, it's not. Just, it's like it's got the same stuff that our other store has. It has like yeah. vintage pots, like some Mug, shoes, coffee mugs. Like it's and, not. It's so we not sold uh, uh, it's seven things for two hundred and forty dollars. You it's know, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's fine. Not, it's not great. It's not it's nothing. Whatever. It's, it's just, not nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay, things we sold. We'll just talk about a couple of them. We sold a cleaver. Yes, a big fancy antique cleaver. It was from that same table lot that had those fancy yep. Henkel's knives. It sold for a hundred and thirty dollars. Yep, where all the old it's men. It's a great were, sale. Yeah, where all the old men were like, "Hey, girl, can I have those?" And he's like, "Nope, get away." Yep. So yeah. that's nice. We sold a Kohler sink. Now you bought this sink at a thrift store for fifteen dollars, and it was a. <clears throat> It was kind of a smaller, almost like a bar sink or just a smaller bathroom sink, almost like a guest bathroom sink. Um, and it it had been installed because you could see where it had like been sealed onto the countertop. But it looked like no one had ever used it. So it was in the original box. Right. So it's almost like someone installed it and they're like, I don't like it. And then they and pulled it out. I saw it. It was in a corner. I was like, man, it's a color sink in the box. I'm like, yeah. And they, I wanted a fifteen bucks for it. And, it's a great uh, price. I was like, great, and it sold for one seventy five. Yeah, in like just a couple weeks. I love. I it. only listed a couple weeks ago. So. I love it. Yeah, no, that's that's a great sale. Okay, uh, you know, and then everything else was just like I think I, I think one a reason why a week can feel slow is just when it's a lot of bread and butter stuff where yeah. you know things sell and it's like it doesn't even. Uh, yeah, you're just like you're um, like oh that old pair of shoes yeah. and like, but it adds know, up. Whatever. And well, and also there was one morning where, the, these are two different mornings this week. One morning I had thirteen things to ship, and I was like, what? And then another morning this week I had like three or four. Right. So it feels like oh the the week is totally dead, but it's like you know some yeah. days were you know higher than others. Okay, uh, customer issues. Yes. Go for it. So someone had called in uh, a couple episodes ago saying that, that, I think it was last episode, where a customer was refusing a package as a way of returning it, in quotes. Right. And, you know, there was a lot of debate, like, is that even valid in the eyes of eBay? And someone did that to us this week. Um, They said, I bought this by accident. 
I don't want it. I want to return it. Um, I'm refusing the package. And, you know, it just sat there on tracking saying refuse, just sitting there. And so I actually called eBay. So then they did open a case, a return case, like a couple days later. And so I called eBay yesterday and I was like, what's up with this? Like they, they're not using an eBay label. They're, they just refused it. And they go, that actually is not covered under uh, buyer protection wow. and it doesn't count as a return. Okay. So two things. Number one is we had someone come on the uh, forum say, I don't know if they were a postal person, but um, they did mm. confirm that if someone if you uses a package, the package gets put into like the slow, the mail. slow, like that's why it takes so long to get back because, you know, they're not in a hurry to send it back to you because it's a pain in the ass right. to that. But number two, if you told me if you send something parcel, the yes. person refuses it, we have to pay like the That's post office my experience. is going to give us a bill. A bill. Like you owe 10 bucks because this person refused this. So uh, so is so is that item No, it was parcel? a first class. First class. It was a lightweight like pillow. Gotcha. So yeah, right. So, so, so uh, what do you think it's gonna happen then well it's eventually gonna get to us but i had them i think but i had them close the return because it had been over five business days oh, so i yeah. was like i haven't gotten this i yeah. don't see anything on the tracking and they said it actually doesn't count towards a return because there's no track because there's yet. no they're just like right. you know <laughs> and it's it hasn't moved you know right. it hasn't gone anywhere yeah. so so I guess eBay just does not, they're like, no, we don't count that as Good. like a valid return. Okay. So that's so the answer I got. You know what, everyone, write that down. <laughs> just remember that. That's great. If someone yeah. refuses it, I guess you can close the case. That is weird. I, I mean, that that is such a strange thing. Like I buy something and then it's on the way and then it gets to my door and then what they, they just they can't write on it. it so so they don't they open just it. write on it refuse. like i have refused um junk mail before mm -hmm. where you're just like this person doesn't yeah. live here and you write refuse right. so that it just gets mailed back to the the sender i yeah. guess they just write refuse they don't decide open it that they, they and they just and then they no put one. it back out for the person to Got take it, it. and mm -hmm. so i don't understand why the post office doesn't charge you for first class or priority for right. return, refused mail. Right. It's just weird. I don't. Yeah. I don't really understand the whole s part of the system. And then we actually had a couple more uh, it returns that got started. Uh, someone just started for random reasons. Yeah, like know. someone started a hat return. This is funny. This guy started a hat return. It's like a a snapback, like adjustable hat. And he was like, it's too small. I'm like, How big you, can, you can adjust it. Right. Like, that's the whole point of this hat. Right. Um, he never shipped it back. He didn't say a word after that. He never printed a label or anything. So I had, I've had i never received it either. Right. Um, so I closed that return. You know, it's just, it's sometimes those, those like immediate returns where they're like, I don't like it. And then they are just like, eh, maybe they do like it. They just never close the return. And right. I just close those. After yeah. five business days, I just call them like, they right. didn't ship So it. if someone wants to return something, we always say go for it. Yeah. Open up a case and right. do it. You know, right. and you can print a label. It's all good. Right. Once they open up that case, they have five, five business, business days. days to put the tracking in. Right. Right. I mean, it, it, I've seen people do it on the fifth day. It, it doesn't have to get to us. No, just there they have to, to tracking. the tracking has to have like right. validated in the system or right. whatever. Gotcha. Um, the, that's just, that's yep. just their system. So, you know? Jay, I want to ask you a question. I love questions. Um, tell the people what you put in your little lunchbox. You got new lunchboxes. That's right. Because, you know, we got these little, <laughs> they're like little airline trays. So yeah. we were making, you know, like, th you know, meat and some sweet like potatoes. Like a side yeah. dish. But I was like, you know what? Sometimes I just want a salad and it doesn't really fit in there. So I bought basically... Like salads. Uh, salad bowls. They're like little round... They're yeah. just like the other ones, only they're just a round it's just bowl. Like when you go to whatever yeah, a like, convenience store and you buy, buy a like salad. A but yeah, um, so we. So it's this morning. Yeah. I cooked a chicken, and I shredded all the chicken up. Yes. And I put that into a tub, and then we bought a bunch of uh, lettuce. Yes, romaine lettuce at Costco. We did. We and then Costco. I got my bowls, and we cleaned it, and then we put the. 
uh, the uh, salad in there, and I put chicken and cheese, I put some nuts. And, I put uh, guacamole in mine. Pepper. Sit. So that way, I can just grab it, put in some uh, whatever, like and then dressing, shake it, shake it up, it up. shake it up. And that's eat it. that's great. Yeah. Like when I saw those in the mail, I was like, "That's a good idea." Well, so. I think we had mentioned this somewhere on yeah. the forum or something where we were like, how do we get a Costco membership for like cheaper than the membership is? Right. And, and people were saying like, if you get a Costco credit card, like the savings they will give you free or something. Yeah. It's not a free membership, but like you get percentage back so uh, that it like eventually pays for the membership. Yeah. And I was like trying to get my mom to get me on her membership, but we don't live in the same state. So I couldn't like prove my address. So a friend of mine who lives in our town has an executive membership because she runs like a business, a right. business that needs Costco stuff all the time. So she got the executive membership and she was like, oh, I'll just put you on my card for free. It's great. Because she was like the executive membership. Um, it's $120 a year, which is double the regular membership. She's like, I get um, like two to three percent back on all purchases. So she's like, if you buy stuff, I'll get, you know, the savings back. So right. it's worth it to me to help me, you know, pay for stuff for the membership. She's like, so I'll just put you on for free. It was great. I was like, what Costco. Great... Yeah, right. It was awesome. I mean, we've been, we've been a Costco member before, but we were like, how do we, it was really funny because I didn't even ask her. She just was like, I went out to dinner with her and she's like, oh, I just got, you know, I just drove here from Costco. And I was like, I got to get a Costco membership again. Yeah. And she's like, I'll just put you on my card. I yeah. was like, I didn't even say anything. And, you know, and so we went to Costco and, you know, it's it's cool and all. But it really is like it's not it. it they don't have the deals that I like. I mean, it's kind of like they have some. I think it's good for like. people who want like to <laughs> eat at Whole Foods, right. but it's not pay Whole, Whole Food foods. prices. Yeah. But it's more expensive than like a Walmart or or our favorite place, Sharp Shopper. Yeah, Sharp Shopper. Um, Sharp yeah. Shopper is the cheapest place ever. So it's really hard to go to Costco and you're like, you know, there was one thing we were like, oh, let's get like a fancy cheese. Let's like treat ourselves. And it was so hard to pick one because they were so expensive. Yeah, we were know, like, oh like, my God, it's $8. I mean, it's a good deal yeah. for the quality. Right. But we like it. But cheaper. I'm like, I want it to yeah. be a dollar. So um, I don't know. It's fine. I mean, th that's one reason why I did want to pay for a card because I'm like, how often are we going to go? You but know? the good thing is we run two vacation rentals. So we were able to get like they, they have a great price on toilet paper, yeah. paper towels, you know, laundry detergent. That's okay. like stuff we go through like like crazy. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's fine. But, you know, I I just think we've evolved as like super scavengers i mean it was hard going in there being like yeah let's get like fancy treats and stuff and we're like oh my god this is like smoked salmon for 25 dollars." Yeah. i was like nope i'm yeah. not getting that <laughs> yeah. oh they have good price they have the best price on coffee yeah. um that was the that was one of the best cool. i like calculated it versus like the coffee we buy at walmart and i was like this is cheaper how much per ounce so at Walmart, it was 50 cents per ounce um, for the Starbucks. It's Starbucks medium roast. Yep. And essentially, it is Starbucks medium roast, only it's Kirkland brand, but it's roasted by Starbucks. I think it was like 40 cents an ounce and less, like depending on which right. like brand you See, got. So I was like, that's the best. That's actually the best price I've ever seen for actually good. Right. You know, and, you know I love that we're in the aisle. Like it's with our calculators. I was calculating. Out. I was just like, like, you know, it's doing price per ounce trying because, to figure out the best. Yeah. So Costco is great for, for stuff like that. And like you said, the quality is a lot higher sometimes. I think it's good too. Like if you're into eating like microwave food, because they have like they have all a lot those of that stuff. things where you can buy like big boxes of like microwave food for microwave. Yeah. Pretty cheap. But okay. Yeah. Anyway, that, that was our Costco adventure. It was very fun. And, and just so it's clear. Yeah. So we like this other place where you can buy discount groceries where it's either expired very close to expiration close or it expired. is expired uh and yeah. and you can buy stuff just i mean 25 percent of, of oh it's a price. fraction you're yeah. just like it's like so cheap um you know and sometimes there's like things where it's not even close to expired and the company just like changed the packaging right. like i found stuff like that where i'm like this is brand new yeah. uh 
uh, they just like changed what it looks like. Right. Anyway, you can call us on our voicemail line at any time of night or day. The phone number is 540-407-8486. And a bunch of people called us this week. Hey, Jay and Ryan. This is Matt from Indiana. Love the show. I got a couple quick things, a question and a story. First, the question, uh, wondering how you handle dry, clean only items uh, that you sell. Do you get those professionally cleaned? Do you get an at-home kit or do you just not worry about it? Um, I've got a few things that are dry, clean only, and I'm wondering if I should should try to get them cleaned before I list them. I'm just wondering how you approach that. And second, a quick story. Um, I was going through an independent thrift store like you all recommend, and I saw some digital voice recorders on the table. I just kind of passed them by, but then I thought, well, let me check. Looked at the model number on one, and I could not believe uh, the eBay sold listings I saw. So I picked it up and uh, listed it for a week. It just sold yesterday for $1,500. And, uh, yeah, I bought that recorder for $5 that day. So uh, just to remind everybody, go check out those independent thrift stores, and uh, especially on electronics, check <laughs> check the model numbers, and, uh, and hopefully it will pay off for you. Um, I think, yeah, it was a – I think uh, ghost hunters use that kind of recorder, so that's why it's uh, so popular. But, uh, but yeah, just check those model numbers, um, and good luck to everybody scavenging, and uh, thanks for the show. Bye. Okay, first I do want to talk about the voice recorder. I can't believe you didn't tell us what model it was. Well, if, if, <laughs> if it's the uh, it's ghost hunter one, that there, there's one that guys buy because somehow you can do something to the a circuitry, oh. so it makes, you know, I mean, look, there's there's... There, there aren't ghosts. There's no such thing. You, if you do Just something to the circuitry you. where, like, if you walk around, oh, it does. Something. It makes it seem like there is like some uh, kind of paranormal. Fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. though. That's like quite a. That's a great sale. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's amazing. Um. Uh, as far as dry clean things, I mean, I. Uh, here's an example. Okay, I bought two cashmere coats the other day. One was white, and it had some marks on the front. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to pre-treat those marks. And what you could do is just use a little OxyClean pre-treater and then kind of rinse that part off. But what I ended up doing was I just threw it in my washer on super hand washable, delicate, all cold. And I washed it and it was fine. And then don't dry it. Don't just put it in the dryer. Up. I just hung it up like in my bedroom and let it dry for a couple days and it looked gorgeous. I don't think we've ever gotten anything dry cleaned. I mean, I've never gotten anything dry cleaned. I mean, the only reason I yeah, I can't imagine there being any reason why we would ever do that. I mean, something would have to be worth a lot of money. Yeah. $800. Right. And be filthy. Like right. the other thing about dry clean only is I'm like it looks fine. Yeah. If some if if my buyer wants to dry clean this, they can do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'll clean some clothes like like those insane clown posse hats. There were some that you're like, somebody wore this every single day. So I'm gonna pre treat them and then I'm gonna wash them on gentle and they're gonna be fine. And they look gorgeous. They look brand new. Um but again, if something's not, you know, totally filthy or whatever, I generally don't clean stuff. I'm like yeah. The person who gets this is going to throw it in the wash. Like, yeah. they're not going to just wear it off of, <laughs> out, right out of the package. Yeah. I mean, they might, and they can do that, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. Hi, Jay and Ryan. This is Mark from Florida. Hey, I was just watching your YouTube videos on what sells in your store, and I noticed that Ryan, she shows everything, and she says, now I have to pack this. Well, I'm confused if it's already listed. How do you know the exact weight? And the dimensions, like how do you exactly do your shipping on, on eBay? So if you could answer that question, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Love your podcast. Bye. So, Mark, how are you doing? This is a very good question, and we kind of talked about that earlier. Yeah. I mean, coincidentally, as long as the item fits in a 12 by 12 by yeah. 12, 12 cubed box, all you have to do is put the a weight in there. Right. And eBay automatically calculates it based on the buyer's uh, zip code. Yeah, so, so you know, if I sell a pair of shoes, it's just like, I mean, those are going in a poly mailer, right. generally. So, yeah. so I have the weight, okay, they weigh two pounds. Right, because when we are taking pictures, we also have a scale. Yeah, we weigh stuff. And you weigh the stuff, and then you put it on the eBay page. Yeah, you're like, this weighs two pounds. Right. Now, 
there are times where, yeah, as Ryan says, like, I got to pack this thing. And it's like a huge yeah. a lamp. So how do you do that? Right. So like I said earlier, I'm estimating, okay, this lamp is 20 inches tall by, you know, five by five. So let's let's guesstimate, you know, with right. some padding and et cetera, um, you know, what the box I'm going to either make or buy is going to be. It's going to be close enough. I mean, there have, I, I, I kid you not, there have been times where I'm like, I guesstimated the size, and it is the exact size of the right. box. Like, it ended up being. So, <laughs> that's because you've packed... A lot of stuff. Thousands of items. Yes, thousands. Now, if you're brand new, I yeah. mean, some people say, well, I pre-pack everything. Right, some people and, do that. I mean, we don't recommend that now, but I guess if you're just starting out... You could, yeah. Pre-packing could make sense, because then it, it, you actually get a right. sense of how it all works. You know? <laughs> Excuse me. And, and it seems like... The uh, newer people are to eBay, the more complicated they want s- their stuff to be to sell. Yeah, like, right. we will have a new people say, I've never sold on eBay. I have this gigantic lamp <laughs> or piece chandelier, of artwork. This <laughs> chandelier, like, this artwork that's like four by four by four and it's <laughs> got glass. And, and we're like, why pick that? Why? For Just the sell, first sell a t shirt. Yeah. yeah. So. No, I, so yeah, so you learn and and you make mistakes and you make expensive mistakes sometimes, but um, you know that's just how it goes. Hey, this is uh, Jeff from Southern California. Uh, just wanted to call you guys. I uh, love the podcast. Uh, been listening for a couple of years. I've listened to every episode I think since then. Um, anyway, my question is uh, about something you kind of touched on before uh, a little bit. It's uh is the effect of YouTube uh all the how sell how to sell YouTube videos. Uh, back in the day they didn't seem to be like they are now. It seems like they're having a huge impact, I would say, in the last year or two on eBay. Now I'm not talking about you guys because you guys are uh, your podcast is awesome. You guys are sell all kinds of different stuff. But in some categories, like especially in clothing and stuff like that, it seems like it's been uh, really affected it. Because used to I would say, I don't know, three, four years ago uh, most of the YouTube videos were just how I made two hundred thousand dollars in a year on selling on eBay, and then you watch it, and really they're just trying to sell you their book or their DVD, and they don't give you any information until you give them money. That's what it was on there before. Then all of a sudden, people started in the last couple of years started giving up sources, telling brand names, and all that stuff, and uh, it has affected it. I think I, I'm. I know you guys have talked about it before and didn't think it had, but I think at this point it has. Um, like my girlfriend is a clothing seller. I'm mainly media and I do more Amazon than eBay, but her business, she started a couple of years ago. It was great. And it's dropped nearly 50% or more in the last two years. And I think it's due to some of the people, um, with the YouTube videos. I really think that they hurt their own business even in some cases by giving out too much information. Just wondering what you guys think of the effect on it. Um, it's I, I just I don't think there's any turning back now, but <laughs> I'm in Southern California. The medium income out here in my area is like I don't know seventy thousand dollars or something like that. I guess the per person is something like forty forty two thousand or something. It's a lot of money because I'm I'm thinking how that would affect all my competition from some of the southern states where the Income there is around twenty, twenty-three thousand dollars in like Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, those kind of states. So how can I compete with a state that's got a six-dollar minimum wage, where I live in a state where it's a twelve-dollar minimum wage? A kid there would make more money selling on eBay. They can sell something making a three-dollar, five-dollar profit and do fine, whereas I have to do a lot more because I live in a more expensive area. Uh, it's just interesting. I don't know how to. How it all's working out. I think everybody's getting undercut by too many people competing, and especially in areas where they don't need as much money. But there you go. <laughs> all right, take care. Bye bye. Okay, so number one, these are good questions. Yeah. Every so often, we'll get an email from some grumpy old guy who's like, Why are you doing this podcast? <laughs> you are telling other people how to sell stuff. Creating competition. Why would you do this? Yeah. You're losing, you know, you are losing customers. Right. You're creating competition. And you know what? He's exactly right. He could be right. I mean, 
if we were totally cutthroat, we would just not do this podcast. Right. And we would just shut up and we would find everything we can and like find little things that we could just sell again and again. I mean, so why yeah. do we do this podcast? Right. Oh, because we wanted to talk to other people yeah. who did what we did I mean, and not what, feel alone. Right. I remember there was a time when you were like, this is really lonely. You know, is well, this, I started, is this yeah. what we're going to do? I started an email list with just a handful of people that I knew, you know, in real life who right. sold on eBay, like my mom and like a couple other friends. friends. Yeah. Well, Mikey and Wendy. Yep. Um, and you because, know, because it, what it was, was eBay can be a lonely existence. Yeah. You're just you're here in your house, listing. You're going to an auction. Yeah. You list. I mean, there's no conversation. Right. And, and, and I wanted to be able to be like. I had this sell, this buyer who right. did this thing. Is this weird? You know. You know what? There's more to life than money. That's true. Money does help. <laughs> but but uh, yeah. Okay. So he's talking about those those haul videos or like the this is what yeah. I'm selling videos and yeah maybe. But I mean I mean but but it's true. You know like I I know I talked to guys who like they were doing well and they would just sell old. Uh, video games or they right. would sell phones and, yeah, and yeah. now they're like I can't do it because so much everyone's doing it you know I mean and that's the thing it's just yeah. like you know wholesale it's like you can't get stuck on one item like right. if your business is selling one kind of item and you're dependent on that one kind yeah. of item that's a bad business to yeah. be in it's, you know? it's just for us we are always like the market is big enough for unique vintage items right and everyone's going to find different things because i'm not selling commodity right. items and that being so. said i definitely am very quiet about what we do in our local area. in our area like, yeah. I, like I, I don't go around and say i'm a scavenger and right. kind of tell people because then yeah i don't need to make competition in, in my, my area, local area in my sourcing area but you know if i'm talking to someone's in a michigan right now or this guy's in southern, southern california, california i'm like if you can find some hats and sell them go for it you know yeah um now the other question that you asked was how can uh, a you in a higher income area like southern california compete against someone like us who right. live in, in a very i low... think our a median income in our poor a uh, rural county yeah it's like Twenty eight thousand dollars or something. If that, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's you can buy a house for under a hundred thousand dollars where yeah. we live. I mean, it, it's not going to be a great house, but you know, the <laughs> a lights are going to turn on. So, how do you do that? I mean, that's a good question. It's a great question. The hope is is that in your higher income area, you're finding higher dollar items, right? Yeah, if you have access yeah. to stuff that's going to sell for a lot more. But really, you know, the you know we. Those of us who are uh, who are out in cheaper places, you know, we do have that advantage of having yeah cheaper cost of living. Southern California uh, is probably one of the highest cost yeah. of living in the country. But I'm I'm assuming that if someone is in a higher income area, they are there because of a higher quality of life. Of, of life, you know. And if you aren't, because we quote unquote we, higher quality, we moved. To the rural Southern yeah. America from San Francisco because of that reason. We were right. like, it's too expensive here, right. and I don't want to have to pay for this life. Right. I love San Francisco. I love the San Francisco Bay Area. I would love to live out there. I think it's beautiful and amazing, and the people are amazing. Too expensive. It's yeah. just like, yeah. and I just no, I didn't want to yeah. do it. So, we, so we, you can't. You have that choice. Yeah, we could not build a big building behind our house. For the price, to, yeah. to store eBay stuff, you yeah. know. Hey, Jane Ryan, uh, just calling about uh, some of the uh, past episodes. I've been hearing guys uh, building a, a new concrete slab, and that's uh, pretty cool. I'm a soils engineer, so uh, it was cool hearing guys talk about my career for uh, on the podcast. Uh, I was just thinking, so my residential job sites, uh, some of these food trucks come by, and they, uh, you know, they, they come loaded with all these hot dogs and sodas. They show up in front of the houses and or construction sites, and they blow the whistle and Dozens of guys just drop the tools and run out there. So uh, if, if Jay ever wants to get involved in that, that'd be awesome. Let us know. Bye. I love that. I'm telling you. Food truck slash eBay business. Like, like that's basically. A great, like, what other combinations are great like that, you know? Yeah. They're both very flexible jobs. Um, 
you could be listing on eBay during slow times in the food truck. You could you be. just pop out your yeah. your laptop and list your drafts. But like I bet that the food truck business would be like a a morning, like a wake up early, go out right. to construction sites, sell like egg and cheese sandwiches, right, right. And like uh, taquitos, you know. Oh man. Yep. But barbecue pork rolls buns. <laughs> there's so many and then you know by about probably one o'clock you're you're driving home and then right, just exactly. do ebay the no the i day. mean i think it's a there there must be somebody out there that does a food truck and yeah. sells on ebay we've never heard yep. we've never you heard could be, of those people. i'm trying to think other things you could uh, work in a library and do ebay that's true i don't know other things like there that. are many combinations hey ryan jay call and let you know i do love the podcast run my business out of hanover pa up near gettysburg um, my full-time job actually i have a full-time job is off of the capitol beltway up in, near washington so if you're ever in the area I have to tip and hook up again my name's alan wilkes finding treasure shop is the uh, store on ebay this one is say there was a comment about bonanza which i also use bonanza and, and don't look at it a whole lot, but uh, one of the neat features is, I don't know if you've seen this, if you go on to Bonanza, you can actually see, the, and I don't know why eBay doesn't have this, but they actually will show you what was disapproved by Google, and you can go in and fix it on eBay. Um, it'll show you what's missing or, or why Google will not use it with variations or, you know, if it's missing the uh, some value. Uh, just want to let you know, quick message. Again, love the uh, podcast. Keep up the good work. Cool. Well, that's actually, yeah, I mean, it's like you. We're kind of like just put stuff on. Yeah, I mean, Bonanza just Bonanza. Syncs, with our, syncs with our store. But what's interesting is you're saying that um, you they can have a see. Tool. Yeah, you can see why Google Shopping might be rejecting your item. So you can fix it. So I'm assuming if you fix it. On eBay, it'll sync back to Bonanza, but will it show up on Google Shopping through eBay also? <laughs> so that? if you it, like, if you hear this, if you could email us, and if there's like a link, yeah, I would love like, to know. Does this tool have a name, or like, where would we find that? I know yeah. I've seen an email one time where Bonanza was like, a couple of your listings didn't show up in Google Shopping, and I just ignored it. Um, and and is it free? <laughs> like like is it part of the free, or do do you have that's a good to question. To be a member. Yeah, yeah, have like a subscription. Good question. Hi, guys. This is Keith from uh, Boston. Uh, I just want to say keep up the good work. Great podcast. Um, I have a little bit of uh, experiment that I ran the past uh, month or so. So there's always that secret of uh, metrics and how your listings are bumped up and the views you're getting on items. Um, so I ran I, I ran a small little test. Um, I, I, I was in the uh, market for two expensive golf clubs. They were a little over uh, $250 each. So I, I ran a test um, because I saw something on e one of the eBay forums. I can't believe I actually was looking at the eBay forums, but I was trying to kill some time looking at the eBay forums, and someone was saying that if you buy items, buy some expensive items on the same account that you sell, your listings will be bumped up and you'll get more views and in turn get better sales. So the uh, last week in December, I bought um, my golf club. I think it was like $275. I bought it on a Sunday night, um, and the following five days, I had really high sales. My sales were up 50%. That was the last week in December. Um, the first week in January, I didn't buy the club, the, the other club I wanted. Uh, it was a driver that I wanted. I didn't buy anything on eBay, um, and my sales were flat. I think they were up like 5% um, from the past 30 days. And then the second week in uh, January – I bought the other club that I needed. I bought the driver that I needed. And my sales were, once again, they were almost at uh, above 60%. Um, so I don't know what this means. I don't know. I just had this small little exper uh, experiment that I wanted to try. And it looked like when I wanted to, the weeks that I bought two expensive golf clubs totaling o over $500, I had really good uh, sales uh, in my eBay store. I don't know if this helps. I don't know if this... Is any, if it's a coincidence or not, but I just want to throw it out there. Um, I, I have a mid-level store. I think I have like 13 or 1,400 items in my uh, eBay store. All right. Thanks. Bye. I have never heard that before. And I'm like, oh, no, I have like a separate buying account that's totally separate from my seller account. <laughs> 
So I don't know. That's a that's a crazy theory. I've never heard that before. So if you buy stuff, it, it helps in selling. Yeah, he's saying like he bought two expensive items and he split them up between two different weeks to do an experiment. And it sounds like, hmm. you know, the first. Although I will say this, the last week of December was a super high week for us too. Um, it just December was really yeah. good. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I think like any experiment, you know, it would have to be done a more than just a couple times. Yeah, you should try so, it again. You know, do it once a month and see if that one week is where just gangbusters. You do it, you know. Yeah, that's where we're gonna have to so try it. Then. Explain to people why do we have a buying account from a selling account? Because I want to send people offers and not want them to think that I'm going to resell it on my store. I mean, most of the stuff I'm buying on my buying account is not for my store. Right. It's just for like our rentals or our house. Like I'm just shopping. Right. Um, I guess I feel like I would get better deals if people don't think I'm reselling because I'm not. Right. Um, or if they see like, you know, we're trying to, you know, give people a low ball offer on an item and they check out our store and they're like, you have, but you're yeah. trying to sell a jacket yeah. for fifty dollars too. Why are you offering yeah. me ten dollars? You know. Well, I wouldn't do that low ball and offer. Why are you being like that, yeah, Ryan? I would. And saying things like, "Why are you selling this for so much? It's junk." <laughs> I would never say that to another <laughs> seller ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, there are so, there are some times where I will buy stuff on other stores and then resell it. So that is partly why I have a buying account. Right. It's rare, but I do do it. So that's that's the main reason why. Yeah. Hi, Jay and Ryan. Love the podcast. Quick question. Um, I was at an estate sale and I bought this box and it's got a clock in it and it's made in China. So I'm putting it on eBay. I look for a similar item that was sold and I see somebody who's got the exact same one but they're saying it's made in Germany. And on the bottom of my box, it says made in China in big letters on theirs. It sort of looks like it's rubbed out. Um, should I report that to eBay? It looks, you know, I feel it's like uh, they're selling something that really isn't made in Germany. It's a Chinese box. But I don't know if that really matters or am I going to get, like, tracked or... I don't know. Just a question. Thanks. Bye. I mean... I don't even know what reason you would say because their box doesn't say made in China and there's no way for you to be like, I have one that's made in China and their box is exactly the same. But it's like, how is eBay going to, you know, eBay, you know, what if yours is just a repro and theirs mm. is actually from Germany? There's no way for anybody to like prove that. And eBay is just going to be like, whatever. Yeah. Like they're not going to pull it down. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's... So, is he buying it to uh, sell it? Yeah, or, he's uh, going to sell his, but uh, his says made in China. I and the so. other person has the exact same one that says right. it's made in Germany. Hmm. But he thinks they just, like, scratched out the made in uh, China. But, you know, it's like, that's that seller's problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying where you're like, I, you know, might not be able to sell it as much as they're selling it for, yeah. you know, and they're cheating, yeah. <laughs> it seems. I, mean, I know sometimes you can go down that rabbit hole of, like, everyone should go by the same yeah. uh, rules and, like, I want, you know, yeah. everything to be even, but... It just... I just think it's not worth your time, and if it's a nice box, even though it is made in China, or a nice-looking clock... Um, just, you know, put a good price on it anyway. But yeah, I hear you. You're like, ah, or maybe that person, you know, bought it and it didn't say made in China and that was, our, that sticker was already taken off or it was rubbed off when they got it and they're taking a guess and they might be wrong. Right. You know, it doesn't mean they're trying to be fraudulent or whatever, but, um, maybe message them. I don't know. Okay. That is it for the podcast this week. You can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. You can call and leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video to show what sold and how much it sold for, currently being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. We're ending this podcast in 3, three two, 2, 1. Bye, bye, bye.